Welcome into another edition of News for Jags podcast. We are talking playoff game, Cole. It is less than 24 hours away. It's, it just doesn't feel real to me yet. It has been a remarkable season. I think I can make the claim pretty safely that to this point, this has been the most gratifying season in Jaguars history. 96 was pretty close. Of course, didn't get all the way there. 2017, maybe in the same ballpark, but again, it didn't last after 2017. So right now, I think if you're a Jaguars fan, you're experiencing the most enjoyable season the Jaguars have ever had. Yeah, and you know, to me, 96 was just in a different level. I mean, in football newness, everybody was just excited. If football team was in its second year, and there's just so many parallels between 96 and this year's team. We talked about this before, but just the, the, the 2017 team to me just didn't feel that, that same buzz. They backed into the playoffs. They backed into a division title, and you, you didn't have that lasting feeling. To me, this team feels like it's it's peaked earlier than expected, and this seems like it could be something that is ascending, not just going to end after that 2017. T- the 2017 season just was a flash in the pan to me. This seems like it could be continued for, for years to come. Two points on that. One, the 2017 season, remember the first half of the season was win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. They were 4-4 four and four at the midway point. Didn't look like they were going to be able to put anything together, much like 96, where they made a run. They in 2017 made a run. And now here in 2022, make a run. But your point about where this franchise is going is exactly right. In 96, that started the ascension of the Jaguars. The two things that ruined that ascension after the 99 season were salary cap issues and injuries. There aren't going to be salary cap issues. Teams don't get into salary cap trouble anymore. They know how to handle those things. Um, particularly when you have a young quarterback on his rookie deal, you can start restructuring that contract. You wind up borrowing cap room from the bank of the quarterback. It's a great situation to be in. Just ask Kansas City. You've done exactly that. The other thing is you're talking about injuries. And the Jaguars this year have been very fortunate to stay away from a lot of the injuries. Uh, Cam Robinson, obviously, a big one. Smoot's a not insubstantial one. Ben Barch, uh, an injury early in the year. The whole thing with with Shaq Griffin, but they haven't had a debilitating injury in a spot where they didn't have somebody to step in. Right. Tyler Shatley was ready to step in. He could have been a starter from the beginning of the year, potentially. Uh, Walker Little, you drafted to be a starting tackle, so he stepped in, has played very well uh, since Cam Robinson went down. I do think losing Smoot, that obviously that hurts your depth, but mm-hmm. it does not hurt your starting lineup. So they've been able to avoid a lot of these things. And the last injury to talk about with, with Shaq Griffin, when you have Shaq Griffin going down, and all of a sudden that allows you to move Darius Williams to his natural position, right. and he has played so well at outside corner rather than be the nickel, um, not, not only does that help this year, that shows you what you need to do going forward. Tyson Campbell and Darius Williams are going to be the cornerbacks on this team. You go out and look for a, a nickel corner right. for your future in the offseason if you want, but right now the arrow is pointing up so dramatically I think like never before. Now this reminds me more of 96 than it does of 2017 because 96 was was the start of that ascent. You had 96, 97, 98, 99 with 99 being that crescendo. And after 99, you can make the the case that bodies broke down, contract purgatory for the Jacksonville Jaguars. There were trades to to get under that cap, getting rid of some, some really good cornerstone guys. And you never recovered from that. This to me feels more like 99 or 96 in a cent because that was the start of something good and then 90 you know 99 after things broke down but 2017 was a flash in the pan you know you say that and, and one of the things that I think about is the window of opportunity you know we talk about that and that usually has to do with the quarterback on his contract and where the coach is in his career if you've got a coach who's 70 years old well the window of opportunity may not be open for very long you don't know Um, If you've got a quarterback who's 36, well, the window of opportunity, probably not going to be there. But you've got a young quarterback. You've got a a guy, you know, in his 50s in Doug Peterson who's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So as long as that uh, combination of Peterson and Trevor Lawrence stays on the same page and everything goes well, the window window of opportunity to, to be a contender and potentially win a championship is open right now in Jacksonville, and it could be open for the next 10 or 12 14 years. And that's why I liken that to 96 yeah. because that was the start of something. You got younger guys. I mean, Brunel was in his second year as a starting quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, his second year. So you feel like that you're, you're ramping up. And again, the similarities between the records, the nine wins, how things happened between 96 and, and 2022 are so 
close there. You got guys who are hitting that, that early to mid-career arc, and that's what's happening in Jacksonville. 2017 to me, which was the last time they made the playoffs, just again, we, we talked about at the beginning of the, the podcast, it was you backed into the playoffs. You didn't have that, that late season hurrah. Yeah, you ended up in AFC Championship game, but it was not that season that was, you, you weren't built to last in that sense. Everything started falling apart yeah. after that. Yeah, I, and again, quarterback, coach. Right. Uh, you had a coach who was having his best success in 2017 in Doug Marone. You had Blake Bortles who was playing well enough to win. Um, it was fool's gold in a lot of ways. Again, a lot of us at the time said, why do you give him another contract? Why do you give him the contract then? Why not wait another year? That obviously was a bad decision. And you talk about 2017 and how in 2018 it started to fall apart. Ironically enough, it really started to fall apart in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. I was at that game at Arrowhead Stadium where the Jaguars were 3-1 and one. two weeks earlier. They had beaten the, uh, the Patriots, were riding high, had sort of a, a sleepwalk win over the Jets the following week. And in, in postgame, uh, after that game, we heard Doug Marone really talk about some of the things he was worried about what he was seeing. And then, boy, they all came home to roost the following week against the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes just carved him up. Chris Jones had a big game in the middle of the line. And uh, the Jaguars never recovered after that. So... Uh, if you want to look for a storyline of retribution here, well, it's a chance for the Jaguars to go back to Kansas City. I know they've been there since, but to go back to Kansas City with a key game and when it started to go in the tank back in 2018, well, now a chance to step it up and go to the next level and go back to the AFC Championship. Yeah, let's talk about that game for a second. Okay, they played in week 10 right before the bye week, and you could kind of make the case that's where things started to kind of turn around, even with the loss. You lost 27-17, but it was there during that, that time heading into the bye week. Doug Peterson said he had confidence in players, that they could play out. you got a seven-game season in front of you. You could still turn things around within, within the AFC South. So that was a turning point, even with that loss, the biggest seat loss to date as that point. And then you come back, and you've been a different team since the break. Well, as you know, I know a lot of people in Kansas City born and raised there, grew up there. Um, and I'm from Springfield. So Spring, we're, Springfield, we're Missouri, Missouri. So that's, Missouri. we've got, we've got uh, you know, uh, the Midwestern uh, angle here. But talking to a lot of folks, both fans and media in Kansas City after that game, they were like, Boy, the, you guys gave us a game. So it was, it, they knew at that point, even with some of the mistakes the Jaguars made, they knew if the Jags don't make those mistakes, drop pass, you know, turnovers, that sort of thing, they could give the Chiefs a game right. in Kansas City. And I, I said this earlier uh, on the air, if Kansas City thinks that they're going to get the same Jaguars team that rolled in there in Week 10, they're going to get surprised in right. a hurry because this Jaguars team is so much better now. They are so much more confident. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is more confident. Tre Trevor talked about how his confidence in the middle of the season was a little bit shaky. Well, he's gotten it back in spades now. There is no deficit that they feel like they can't come back from. By the way, the Chiefs feel the same way. Patrick Mahomes has never met a deficit he couldn't come back from. We know that. Um, but I think this is going to be a heck of a game. Uh, I, I don't know. It's tough to say the Jaguars are going to win this game. But, boy, they have a chance. Uh, this is not, you know, I would not have said they had a chance back in Week 10. They certainly have a chance in this one. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, you're, you're looking at that game. Again, how weird the Jaguars team. You're minus five last week. You win the game 31-30. Not only minus you're, five, but didn't even force a turnover. <laughs> you're minus five, okay. You're minus five, and then at the Chiefs game in week 10, you're plus three, yeah. and you lose 27-17. So nothing about this Jaguars team makes sense. And you're going into Kansas City. It's probably going to be snow on the ground there. And Patrick Mahomes, Arrowhead Stadium, the mystique there, how tough it is to play there. The Chiefs are going to be missing a few guys. Nicole Hardman is not going to be playing. Um, but the guys they do have, I mean, maybe the best at their positions in the league, Patrick Mahomes at quarterback, mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey at tight end, and Chris Jones, you could make the case that he and Aaron, Don Aaron Donald mm -hmm. are pretty comparable as a defensive tackle. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's a reason Kansas City not only uh, ha you know, has been for the last five years the best team in the AFC composite they're also uh, the best team this year. I mean, they're number one seed in the AFC. And even though Buffalo could have caught them and some of these other things, you know, with the DeMar Hamlin game, this is still, even though the Bengals went to the Super Bowl last year, you know you got to go through Kansas City right. if you're going to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. And that's what's happening here. I think it's a great opportunity, a great story to see what's, what's unfolding here. And again, when you talk about the enthusiasm, I've had so many people come up to me and say, I'm so proud of what they've accomplished this year. There's a real sense of pride from the fans about what this team has done 
and you, you know you were comparing it to 96 earlier. In 96, fans were just ecstatic to have a team the, the previous right. year play their first year. Didn't really, you, know, you didn't understand about the, the, the ebbs and flows of the, of the pro football season uh, for a lot of fans. But boy, when you talk about for the last 15 years, where this team has given fans very little to celebrate and to, to embrace and have joy in, Again, that's why I think this has been the most enjoyable season in Jaguars history. If it continues, whoosh, it definitely becomes yeah, that. You know, 96, it was that nostalgia. It was the newness factor. You were learning how to be an NFL town, learning to be NFL fans. 99, I mean, 96 came out of nowhere. 99 was expected. So you had more of that excitement really from week one onward. I mean, you're 14-2 in the regular season, the 62-7 game. I, I've covered every home game of the Jaguars, and that 62-7 game, oh. Again, stood at number one for me until last week's game. I said exactly, said the same thing. I, I said it right after it happened because we had, in our pregame show, we had done a rundown of the top seven Jaguars, all of the play, ranking the playoff wins, and 62 to seven is number one for me. I know a lot of people love the win in Denver, right. um, and, but 62 to seven, that was just an unbridled celebration of Jaguars football that day against the Broncos, or against the Dolphins. What the Jaguars did against the Chargers, is without a doubt the greatest half of football in Jaguars history, and I think it makes for the greatest game in Jaguars history. Now, I don't know if you need a 27-point comeback, but if you go to Arrowhead and beat the Chiefs in almost any style, that game is probably going to be in the conversation of the top three or four for sure. Uh, again, there's a lot of work to do before this happens, but the fact that we're sitting here on what are we? The 20th of yeah. January. We're not talking about the draft. And we're, we haven't we're even about thought the about the draft yet. We're talking, we've talked more about, uh, you know, the Super Bowl. Walker right. Little said to me the, uh, yesterday in the locker room, we have a, we have a goal, and, and it's the Super Bowl, and we think we can win it with this group. We're not worried about the future. We want to get it done this year. How, how, my, how things have changed. <laughs> I mean, you're talking last week when we were at the game, Cole and I were talking about it was the two-year anniversary of Urban Meyer being hired on the playoff Almost night. Almost to the minute when we were Almost to the it. minute of the kickoff. So we were in the locker room afterwards, and we said to Andrew Wingard, we said, hey, it's the two-year anniversary. You guys hired Urban Meyer, and he gave a pretty, uh, a pretty <laughs> neat little expression in, uh, in the <laughs> locker room. You so you were talking, you know, again, last year you're coming off, you're talking about the, the number one pick in the draft. January 20th this year, we're talking about AFC Championship game next yeah. week. Remarkable turnaround. It really is. It, that is the word for it. It is remarkable because you can remark about this all you want, and there's more to say. You get the first pick in the draft. The first pick in the draft next year. So we'll lead off with you, Cole, since, uh, since you're, you're head and shoulders are the, leading the way in the charts. Well, I think, again, this is a game the Jaguars can win. Here's how they can win. I think they need to score on one of their first two drives, and if it's on their second drive, it better be a touchdown. Because if you fall down to this Kansas City team, they are not going to play it safe like the Chargers did last week. Patrick Mahomes is going to go for the jugular. So I, I don't think this is a game the Jaguars want to fall behind uh, here. Scoring early also helps to take the crowd out a little bit. That can certainly happen. Dealing with the weather, you have a lot of guys who haven't played a lot in the weather. It was chilly last week. It's going to be a different kind of cold as the game goes on in Kansas City this week. Um, I, I would like to be able to sit here and tell you that I think the Jaguars can win, but I think I have to take the Chiefs in this one, and I think it's going to be something in the neighborhood of a 33-28 kind of game. Okay, I've gone back and forth with this all week. I picked against the Jags, they win. I picked the, you know, the other teams to win, the Jaguars. It's, I've gone so back and forth on this. I've made so many comparisons to 96. Uh, the similarities between those two are just crazy to me, okay? They, they beat the Bills on the road in the first round of 96, retired Jim Kelly in that game. We weren't supposed to win that game, eight and a half point favor, eight, eight and a half point dogs. You go to the Denver, number one seed in the AFC playoffs. Again, comes from the AFC West, just like the Chiefs do this year. Okay, you're coming off a bye in the first round. I'm going to say 30-27 in honor of that 96 <laughs> win over the Broncos. Jaguars over the Chiefs. I think it would be a stretch if they are to beat the Chiefs. I think anything is possible, but I, I picked against the Jags last week, got ridiculed for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the team of destiny, just like 96. 30-27 in honor of that 96 team. I like the pick. How? And I will say this. If the Jaguars do beat the Chiefs, I'm picking them to go to the Super Bowl. Wow. 
So here you have it. I mean, it, it's, it's unprecedented around here in Duval for this time of year for us. We're talking draft. At this point last year, we're talking draft. Who's picking number one? The Jaguars again. Who are they taking at number one? We're not talking about that. We're talking about AFC divisional round, potential AFC championship game, best season in Jaguars history. It feels so different. For Culpepper, Justin Barney, we will talk to you later on this week, hopefully talking about a Jaguars win.